Hello, um, my name is Ann Clark. I'm the Provost of Goodwin College. I'm very honored to participate in uh, uh, readings of uh, books that have been banned uh, by individuals in this country. Um, the book I'm reading from is uh, Water for Elephants by Sarah Gruen, a book uh, uh, published in 2006. Prior to it being banned in uh, Bedford, New Hampshire by parents who didn't want their children in a high school to be reading this book, um, it had never been banned before. Um, it was banned for sexual content, uh, although that's a very small part of the book, which is a historical novel about an old man remembering his time as a circus veterinarian during the Great Depression and uh, his encounter with an elephant named Rosie. Um, my name isn't Rosie, it's Rosemary. You know that, Mr. Jankowski. I'm startled into awareness, blinking up into the unmistakable glare of fluorescent lighting. Air what? My voice is thin, reedy. A black woman leans over me, tucking something around my legs. Her hair is fragrant and smooth. You called me Rosie just a minute ago. My name is Rosemary, she says, straightening up. There. Now isn't that better? I stare at her. Oh, God, that's right. I'm old and I'm in bed. Wait a minute. I called her Rosie. I was talking out loud. She laughs. Oh, dear, yes. Oh, yes, Mr. Jankowski. You've been talking a blue streak since we left the lunchroom, just talking my ear off. My face flushes. I stare at the clawed hands in my lap. God only knows what I've been saying. I only know what I've been thinking, and even that's in res retrospect. Until I suddenly found myself here, now I thought I was there. Why? What's the matter, Rosemary said. Did I, did I say anything, you know, embarrassing? Heavens, no. I don't understand why you haven't told the others, what with everyone going to the circus and all. I'll bet you've never even mentioned it, though, have you? Rosemary watches me expectantly. Then her brow furrows. She pulls a chair over and sits next to me. You don't remember talking to me, do you, she says gently. I shake my head. She takes both my hands in hers. They are warm and firmly fleshed. You said nothing to be embarrassed of, Mr. Jankowski. You're a fine gentleman, and I'm honored to know you. My eyes fill, and I drop my head so she won't see. Mr. Jankowski, I don't want to talk about it. About the circus? No, about, oh, hell, don't you understand? I didn't even realize I was talking. It's the beginning of the end. It's all downhill from here, and I didn't have very far to go. But I was really hoping to hang on to my brains, I really was. You still have your brains, Mr. Jankowski. You're sharp as a tack. We sat in silence for a minute. I'm scared, Rosemary. Do you want me to call Dr. Rashid, she asks. I nod. A tear slips from my eye and into my lap. I hold my eyes wide, hoping to contain the rest. It's another hour before you have to, ready to be ready to go. Would you like to rest a spell? I nod again. She gives my hand a final pat, lowers the head of my bed, and leaves. I lie back, listening to the buzzing lights and staring at the square tiles of the drop ceiling, an expanse of pressed popcorn of tasteless rice cakes. If I'm completely honest with myself, there have been hints I was slipping. Last week when my people came, I didn't know them. I failed. I faked it, though, when they made their way toward me and I realized it was me they had come to see. I smiled and made all the usual placating noises, the oh yeses and goodness gracious that make up my end of most conversations these days. I thought it was going just fine until a particular look crossed the mother's face, a horrified look with her forehead crumpled and her jaw slightly opened. I raced back over the last few minutes of the conversation and I would realized I'd said the wrong thing, the polar opposite of what I should have said and then I was mortified because I didn't like, dislike Isabel, I just don't know her, and so I was having trouble paying attention to the details of her disastrous dance recital. But then this Isabel turned and laughed, and in that instance I saw my wife. This made me weepy, and these people whom I didn't recognize exchanged furtive glances and shortly thereafter announced that it was time to leave because Grandpa needed his rest. They patted my hand, and they tucked my blanket in around my knees, and they left. They went out in the world. And they left me here, and to this day, I have no idea who they were.